Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, make us worthy on this Hosanna Sunday to go out to meet you at your glorious second coming, just as the crowds went out to meet you at your first coming. They carried palms and olive branches while shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to save and to renew us. To you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, be glory now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the only begotten Son, the eternal and holy and blessed Word, whose holiness is boundless. To the good Master, who willingly humbled himself, although he is the power and the wisdom of God. And to the one who is glorified by spiritual powers and who was pleased with the praises of infants and children, to the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Christ our God, in the heavens you are carried upon the chariot of light, yet on earth you ride on a donkey's colt. You are hidden from the spiritual powers, yet you are praised by your holy disciples in the streets of Jerusalem. 
O Holy One, you are seated upon the throne of your glory, yet you are honored by the crowds, the old and the young, the infants and children, who spread their cloaks and branches before you. In your grace, you have planned all this for our salvation. Now, O Lord, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to celebrate this feast with joy and gladness and with reverence for your profound humility. Prepare us to go out to meet you at your second coming with purity, wearing globes of, glo globes of glory, shouting with those who celebrate. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In that eternal feast, may we end our departed rays, glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, forever. Christ, you are pleasing to the Father who sent you, and you are the pure incense who has made creation fragrant, bringing joy to the whole world. You fulfilled what was said by the prophets, and you were delighted by the praise of the children. May we rejoice in the sweetness of your love, Make our souls and senses fragrant with the purity of your holiness, so that we may praise and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Oh, 
glory forever. Zion, sing hymns of glory, O Jerusalem, give praise. For your gates have been strengthened, listen and accept the truth. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and your children forever. Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the overseers and ministers, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you, praying always with joy in my every prayer for all of, all of you, because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident in this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right that I should think this way about all of you, because I hold you in my heart. You who are, are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God. I want you to know brothers and sisters, that my situation has turned out rather to advance the gospel, so that my imprisonment has become well known in Christ throughout the whole Praetorium. Praise be to God always. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, 
who proclaim life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, On the next day, when a great crowd had come to the feast, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and they went out to meet him. And they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found an ass and sat upon it, as is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. And his disciples did not understand this at first. But when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and that they had done this for him. So the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from death, these continued to testify. This was also why the crowd went out to meet him, because they had heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the entire world has gone out after him. Now there were some Greeks among those who had come up to worship at the feast. And these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And they asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And Philip went and he told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and they told Jesus. This is the truth, peace be with you. I give thanks to my God in every making, in every remembrance of you, always in my prayers, making supplication for you all with joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. When I was a deacon at the seminary many, 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 many years ago, at the age of 25, I had the chance to be able to go to Jerusalem and to the Holy Lands on pilgrimage with other seminarians. And it was magnificent. But as you approach Jerusalem, there is a tradition. They are called the Psalms of Ascent. They go from Psalm 119 to 130, or 118 to 129 in the new, let me see, make sure. 120 to 134 in the new numbering, but 119 to 133. The Psalms of Ascent, Shira, Hama Aalota, are literally the songs for going up. And those Psalms, 119 to 133, are the Psalms used on pilgrimage by the Jews. So you can go back during this week at some point and look up those Psalms. But they, are, they begin with, so you have verses in them like, my eyes have looked to the mountains for my salvation. Because of course, Judea around Jerusalem is all hilly. They are these little mountains or these big hills. And it was quite moving. Of course, we weren't walking. We were in, we had our van together with all the seminarians. But we had broken up the van onto two sides to do in choral, back and forth like we did at the seminary to recite these psalms of the ascent to go to Jerusalem. And I can tell you that it is inexpressible the joy of having finally arrived at the city where the feet of God incarnate walked the streets 
and then to say the same words of the inspired text that my eyes look upon these mountains which bring salvation. Very moving, very, very moving. The reason why I bring it up because this is part of the joy which is on Hosanna Sunday. Now for many of you, you have Latin tradition, you know that the Passion is normally read on this day of St. Matthew. And if you go to the old rite, it's sung, it takes 20 minutes practically to sing the whole thing. And if you sing all the voices of it and you sing it all in the old Gregorian, it takes 20 minutes and you have the voices all over, a high voice, a middle voice, and a low voice for the Christ. It's quite moving. But in the Maronite tradition, we don't have the Passion read on this day because Hosanna Sunday is precisely one of great joy. It is the one moment of the recognition of our Lord as Messiah. By a fickle crowd, it's true, it's exactly the same people who are going to be shout out, shouting out, crucify him in just a matter of days. But for one moment, the Messiah is recognized in those hills that give salvation. And so as you see in our prayers, there is the, the constant reference, actually several times constant, several times references to the children, that our Lord was delighted by the rejoicing of the children. Nothing like having a 4th of July party where everyone runs around squealing, totally out of control, pumped up with sugar, but you know what it's like. And that is what these prayers make reference to. There, Jerusalem would swell. It's estimated to close to a million people for the Passover season. And because you had all the people in this city, the Gospels also tell us part of the crowd comes out of the city, part of the crowd is on the other side of the Valley of Josephat, and they all wind up meeting up around our Lord to bring this huge cortege coming in. Obviously not everyone in Jerusalem, but a massive part of people coming out for all different reasons. You heard it in the Gospel today. For some, they come out because it's our Lord. Some, they come out because they've heard about this rising of the dead of Lazarus. So like in any kind of human crowd, there's all kinds of things going on on why people are there. But for those who have eyes to see, they recognize that this is one moment in which the Christ is recognized, the Messiah is recognized. And so the same way with the Psalms of ascent, of going up, they are of anticipation and of yearning. St. Jerome talks about that when the pilgrims arrive to Jerusalem, the tears in the eyes and the joy of the anticipation to be in the place that God has touched so profoundly for thousands of years. And so the joy is that aspect, Hosanna. And Hosanna um, has the meaning of save us, Hosanna. But this great jubilation, this, learn, this yearning to see our Lord, the listening, to seeing, the joy, the fulfillment, that's all the aspects that come around for Hosanna Sunday. Now you will notice in the psalm, perhaps you didn't notice in the Husoyo, but it refers to you who are upon the chariot of light. You also sign, it's all the poetry that you have and a parallelism. So you who are in a chariot of light, reflecting the Psalms of the one who rides upon the cherubim. But the term used of Merkaba, the chariot of light, is a reference to the development of that Jewish spirituality, which is found throughout the Syriac tradition, but is also, ironically for some, it also is echoed in today, modern day Jewish spirituality, the Merkaba. And that's a whole nother sermon to be done. But this notion of the extolling of the God of creation upon the chariot of light is echoing, as I say, the Psalms, but is specifically a term used in a whole form of spirituality, which is actually known as the Kabbalah. Kabbalah in Hebrew just means tradition. You have it echoed in here. And in the, you have a seventh century document known as the Syriac Apocalypse of Daniel. It's a text, it's not really. But the importance is, is it talks about God revealing, this is a Christian text about our Lord, revealing as the king in Jerusalem, but the God who is hidden on high in the chariot of light from the hiddenness brought in to Revelation. 
It's just to give you an understanding, an idea behind. These are things that can be developed in other sermons. But this is part of the attitude of the one who rides upon this ass on this day, upon this animal into Jerusalem, is the revelation of the Messiah as king, but he is simultaneously the one who is in hidden light, who rides upon the chariot of light in the divinity in heaven. I just give it to you as a touchstone because when we come to the liturgy of the Kaddishat, and I've mentioned to you, I had one of the teachers I used to work with when we were in the school out in Idaho. And he had contacted me recently, probably about a couple years ago, when he found out that I was at the Maronite Church. And so he wrote me on our website, and he was all excited. Now, when I was in Idaho, working at the school, the headmaster, he was one of the teachers that was there. And he had left before I left that parish. And he had moved to the Midwest. He had moved to Minnesota. But he got so excited, and he wrote me this email that he was so happy to find out where I was. I mean, this is 20 years later, right? So all of his little kids are all married, and he's a grandfather now. So, but he was so excited because when he arrived in Minneapolis, he discovered the Maronite Church in Minnesota. And he had been blown out of the water. I think some will be sympathetic to that experience. And one of the things he point out, he, he, he points out, as other people have over the years, was the Kaddishat. Love the Kaddishat, he writes. Love this hymn. He goes there and he talks about the parish priest and how much he just loved going to this parish and he just rounded up all whatever he had, seven or eight kids, and they all go to this parish years now. But he points out the Kaddishat, which is one of the first things that strikes people. The Kaddish means holy. Kaddish at means you are holy. It's actually A-N-T, ant, but the N's been dropped off in pronunciation. So Kaddish at aloho. Kaddish, holy, at, are, you. You, singular, as in thou. Hol, a God, aloho. And you repeat these things three times. We like them. It's a catchy tune. It never changes. Except watch this week, though, because you have verses that are inserted which will throw you off. Like also for the masses this week, we don't do Alleluia, it becomes Hem U Hem during the week, not today, but during on Wednesday and Tuesday and Wednesday's masses. So what is the Kaddishat? The Kaddishat is that moment of transition from the penitential ceremony of our conversion in the Husoyo, in the ceremony of incense. But the Kaddishat is to extol the God who rides upon the Merkaba, upon the chariot of light, who now reveals himself on the Bima. So as you've noticed, we have two levels of the sanctuary, because you have the Holy of Holies, the altar, and then you have the lower one, which is we call the Bema. But the Bema literally means in Hebrew, throne. And it has to be the place where God in throne reveals himself through the scriptures, through the word that comes. And the young servers now who are doing the readings, we told them, you become nothing more than the speaker for the voice of God. Appreciate what it means when you are allowed to read the scriptures within the divine liturgy. Because these texts have been written thousands of years ago and you are given the gift of one moment on one day in the 21st century to resound those divine words, which is why originally the scriptures were also carried out, brought out at that time. So when you were singing the Kaddishat, it's because the scriptures were actually being brought out for the first readings. And historically, the Maronites at different times in their history had up to five readings on a Sunday. So you think it's long now. And we're having long discussions going on, apparently, um, to restore the Old Testament reading, which the Latins do, which they never did, which we always did and no longer do for the last 20 years. So we will try to have also back the prophets. But it's when the scriptures were being brought out of their place where they're reserved that everyone sang the Kaddishat. Think Palm Sunday. Think Hosanna Sunday. Squealing. 
bumping branches in the air, the jubilation that this is the moment when the king of Israel reveals himself in Jerusalem, in the holy city. That's the Kaddishah. It's not just beautiful because it has a catchy tune and is cool when you know the Aramaic, but because it is the extolling of the one who radiates upon the chariot, the Merkabah of light, who now reveals himself to us verbally through the divine scriptures. That's the Kaddishat. That is why we all bow, et raham alain, have mercy on us, that I should be given the gift of the ability to hear these divine words to be here, that God has opened my ears to hear and given me light of faith to see and to come to the divine liturgy where he speaks to us in his created words of the divine scriptures. That is a gift that cannot ever be sufficiently shown gratitude. That is why the response to you are holy, you are mighty, you are literally non-dying is the word in Aramaic. You do not die, you are immortal. Therefore, have mercy on us. That is the revealing of the one who rides upon the chariot of light in hiddenness, who speaks to us in, from the throne, the bima to give you another understanding of how the liturgy works. So the Kaddishat is something from the very beginning of the Maronite Church. It comes in in the mid-400s. The Council of Chalcedon in 451 talks about the Trisagion, as the Greeks call it, or we just call it just the Kaddishat. And that it celebrates this entrance of the divine scriptures. The other thing I want you to notice, and I've mentioned before, is that for many of the Eastern churches, the Kaddishat being three, what they did is they just referenced into the hidden trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. But in the Maronite tradition, it has always been directed to our Lord, God incarnate on the face of the earth. It is part of that spirituality of the Maronite church that you are holy, you are non-dying, you are this mighty one. It is Christ, and that's why during this week when that, the verse will come in, you who were crucified for us. Because the Maronite understanding is that the face of God, we don't see the one who rides upon the chariot of light. He has to reveal himself to us who live still in this valley of tears among the dirt and toil of this world. And therefore, the face of God is our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the jubilation of Hosanna Sunday, that God has chosen to reveal himself in the person of his Son incarnate. That is the revelation from the God of Sinai, hidden in the mountain and the crashing and the lightning on top of Mount Sinai. Psalm 68 talks about this extolling of God to be enthroned. But the whole movement of the Kaddishat from our conversion to the hearing of the divine word of the scriptures, this whole movement is encapsulated in the Kaddishat of the God who comes from the hiddenness of his majesty, the chariot of light, who then, which is the Lord God of Sabaoth, Adonai Zeboaoth. So this whole notion of Lord God of hosts, the one who reveals himself from his majesty to his enthronement, Bema, in Zion, that he speaks to us as king upon the earth. That is the jubilation of why they pour out of Jerusalem, why they swarm down from Bethany, Bethphage, and the other side, and they all escort our Lord. But when you read the Gospels, you will also see that during that glory of the reaction of the people, our Lord is crying because he knows the fickleness of the human heart. We can get so excited about something and finish in infidelity. And so our Lord weeps over Jerusalem. It's one of the times that this is spoken of. And so the Kaddishat, and when we mentioned that when we would have veils historically, those veils that had covered the altar during the Husoyo actually would be opened at the point when the scriptures would be read. 
And then they would be closed at the end of the gospel, and then you have your instruction. That is how the liturgy has worked over the centuries. So we move from prayer to the expiation of our sins and our confession through Husoyo to adore the one who is all holy and who moves from hiddenness, from the chariot of light of his divinity to speak to us in the holy place in the divine scriptures. That takes you to the understanding of this movement and next week or the following week we'll talk about what that following him is after. But it's why the letter to the Philippians was chosen. It makes no reference to our Lord's passion or anything. It's all about joy. Read it again in the bulletin. That I make continually my prayers for you, the faithful at Philippi, in supplication, praying for you, thinking of you all, praying for you all with joy. That is the Catholic joy, the exuberance that the God who's hidden in divinity has revealed himself to me, little old me. Who am I to stand before that divine majesty? Who was I at 25 to receive the gift to be able to walk the streets of Jerusalem, to put your hand in the hole where the cross of Calgotha was? You have to kind of climb underneath the orthodox altar that's there. Everyone does it, don't worry. And you go underneath it and you can put your hand in the hole where the rock was split, where the crucifixion took place. And you can go down below underneath it to a place which is known as the Chapel of Adam. Because you know when you see the great icons and you have the skull and the cross ones on the bottom, that's a whole other sermon. But you can go down to what's known as the Chapel of Adam and there behind glass you have the boulder and how the boulder has been split open this way on Golgotha. Why at 25 did I receive that gift? Not through any merit of mine, but because God is good. And God has brought us each individually in this great joy, in this great jubilation, to be able to hear what he has to say to us individually. As a church, of course, but every time these scriptures are read, Hosanna Sunday after Hosanna Sunday, they're always the same, but the message is always going to be different each year for that individual, for those who have ears to hear. And that is why what I leave you with is from the same quotation, St. Paul says that I pray that your charity, that the divine love that has been given to you may more and more abound. May you be set on fire. And he says, but that charity may more and more abound in knowledge, if you read the translations in English. But it's more than English. It's one of these neologisms that St. Paul would make on occasion. He didn't make up words because the Greek words were insufficient to actually describe what he's trying to say. And in this case, the word was epigenosis. Gnosis means knowledge. So he makes this word up, epigenosis, this like super knowledge. And what I'm praying for is that your charity, your love for the one who rides upon the chariot of light, that that fire and that understanding consume you more and more and abound so that your minds become more and more epigenosis, this super knowledge that you come to the appreciation of what God is revealing to you. And then he continues and says, in all understanding to take this in wholly. It's a very beautiful image, so I encourage you. Go look, Psalm 119, 133, the Psalms of Ascent, take them apart, read them during this week. Everything in Passion Week is concentrated upon our Lord. You give the marathon run up in the bulletin, I try to describe, I don't give anything for Monday, Thursday, it's essentially the same ceremonies that we do uh, in the Latin church also. But this notion of this charity and this epigenosis, this super knowledge that God holds out to us, what more could we possibly ask for on the face of the earth than these gifts of charity, understanding, and knowledge, which are always given in the desire for God that we receive these things and in responding to them, discover 
great joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, God, the Son of God, stretch forth your right hand and bless these branches here. Prepare your people for the sake of your holy name. We call out to you in prayer, O Lord. That's your part. Hear us, good. Thank you. For those
Open our mouths that we may sing hymns and songs. Lead us on the path to chastity and angelic purity. In this holy procession and all the days of our lives, we praise and glorify you now, oh, and forever.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. You hid in all things were made, for our salvation and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and he came again. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious child. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in the court of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Itel vod madem heida locho, varvot a locho dam chane tayud, vayun tsulo daibu tao keul al vaitoch vesbud al chayet lo, od kodesho. You have the sheets for Palm Sundays. Transfer him in your pews. Almighty Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
Alleluia. Continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, of love and faith that are pleasing to God. before you to receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever O oh lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God, the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly, it is right and just to glorify and exalt You, O Maker of all creation. With the angels, we glorify You, and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim.
only, O God, the Father, and abundant in mercy. Because of your love for us, you sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. sessions and our prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. 
Protect our shepherds. Francis, the Pope of Rome, the shouted Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world, Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all of the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Favor, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers, and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. To our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit 
we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, may you be glorified.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. O Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross and be their shelter and refuge and perfect them with your abundant blessings that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. So just a reminder that this evening at 6 p.m. we have the rite for the coming into the harbor which opens up this hall of great week, of holy week of the Passion. So at 6 p.m. this evening. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <laughs>